Hi there, Chris Fox here. I'm going to show you guys today the overview of a single car test device. Single car test device has uh, been around for oh, probably almost as long as uh, there's been railway cars. These independently check how the air brakes work on them, each individual car separately from when it's in a train. So yeah, it looks like it's got a, it's got a brake valve, a gauge, a regulator, a dump valve, a flow rater valve. And I've added a couple of things on the end just to do testing in my shop. But, uh, this particular unit, I know that uh, short lines and such use these still to a certain degree, but there are other ones out there, more automated ones, and I know the class ones use uh, a lot more automated ones. And uh, um, those ones there are basically push a button, hook it up, push a button, and it does it all for you. This one's a much more manual one, and uh, we'll go over each one. We'll go over it just in basic to show you how it actually works. Um, we'll take it out to the car and we'll uh, hook it up and uh, show you how it actually works. Um, this one here I came across and uh, it's uh, missing missing the handle. There's a handle that goes up here which I'll be putting back on. Uh, I, I received this one. It, it was broken. It was uh, in about three different pieces and uh, I, I, I had to repair it. Um, it was basically sitting collecting dust not doing anything so I resurrected it um, these need to be uh, calibrated this one should be sent away to get calibrated uh, every uh, 90 days and um, yeah so uh, let's get after it and I'll show you actually the basics and then we'll take it out to the car all right so we're here and we have this all uh, Got air on it in my shop right now. And this is just for demonstration. You can only do so much with it in the shop because of uh, not hooked up to the car. I have an external air tank here, so I have some type of a, a reservoir where the air is gonna go to, just to give you a bit of a demonstration on how it's supposed to go. Now, the red needle is your main res, okay? And, <clears throat> or your air supply. The air supply coming in needs to be at a minimum of a uh, hundred. So it's between right now, uh, we're looking at uh, 110 PSI, which is fine. The compressor might kick on, it should go up to 120. And <clears throat> I've added this regulator. It's not particularly necessary, but I like to run it so that I know I have the right amount of uh, pressure going in. And then this is a dual regulator that uh, is, is with the machine itself. And what it gives you is it gives you 80 to 110. So you have uh, two different uh, style which you can uh, 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 use the brake pressure at or the brake pipe at. For this demonstration, we're going to use 80. And it'll give you an idea of what's happening. So you have six positions on the handle. You have quick charging, and you have slow charging, and lap, and then you have slow application, you have service stability application, and you have quick application. Each one of these other ones over here has a, a numbered of a drill hole. This one here, I know this is 3 8 and then this one over here is 3 8 So I'll write it in the bottom and you can read it. So right now, <clears throat> we're going to charge this. And we're going to charge it uh, up to um, the, uh, the 80 PSI and what it needs. So we'll go to fast charge. All right, so we have, we're getting up there, not quite 80. 
So we're gonna need uh, we're gonna need to get some uh, some air in this. All right. So that's a full charge. Pretty close to a full charge there. All right. <clears throat> so now that we have a full charge, we can do a couple of things that we can do. And you can tell it's a full charge actually by the flow rater valve. And <clears throat> the flow rater valve is this valve right here. Okay. So right now it's in the off position or bypass position. And you can see the marks on there. There's a red line on there. It's a condemning line. So if it's, if it's a ball, there's a little ball on the bottom right here. The ball floats. So anything above the red line means there's a leak. Anything below the red line means that there is, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's charged or charging. Now each one of these lines also represents, uh, you can tell leakage and it can't leak to a certain amount. So the ball can't be, uh, if the ball's staying in one spot, it can't move down or raise. Um, in a certain time, and I'll get to that when we're at the car itself. So, give you an idea. All right, just for kicks, I'm gonna try and simulate a leak for you, so you can see. Like I said, this is the condemning line here. If you're doing any brake work on the car, you're testing valves or whatever, the air is gonna flow and it's gonna keep flowing. And this flow rater tells you, by the ticks on here, how good the uh, the car is, or the how, how tight the car is. So if it's above this, that means there's a leak. If it's below this, it means it's fine, especially when you have it bottled or whichever. So I'm gonna simulate a leak here to give you some flow, and you'll see what I mean about the ball. So that was really, really high. We got a high leak. Let me just close the valve a little bit here. Okay, so that would be that would be acceptable. That would be acceptable. Acceptable. Right on the condemning limit. And that would be, to me, I would probably condemn the car. I would, I would go and look to see why it's sitting that high when it should be sitting below it. Okay, right, it is right on the condemning line. So you just give it a bit more. There, okay. That's condemned and that's okay. Right, and, and you can hear the air there. You don't need much of a leak to have this work. So if we reduce the valve. We go to lap. And we'll drop it almost 10 times. When I put the application on, a slow application, you should see the ball move. There, the ball went. The ball's going up. Okay, and as it comes into equalization, it should. Right now it shows it's leaking because it's charging, so the air is flowing through the system. So once it gets to almost equal, it will either go all the way to the bottom or it will float. Okay, every time it's moving, there's air movement through it. So eventually it'll go all the way to the bottom. Right? So right now it's it's good, it's almost charged. Right, which is great. <clears throat> So you can see we're four pounds shy of being charged. So that's why it's still, the ball is floating there. 
Let's do a leakage test. So you can see brake pipe leakage over there. So we are reduced this. We'll reduce this down to the brake pipe leakage, which means we have to reduce it uh, from 70 down to 50. All right, now that we have it at the brake pipe leakage test right now, okay, so <clears throat> this here represents two pounds, and that's supposed to be two pounds in one minute of leakage, all right? Um, standards here in for via rail in Canada is three pounds in one minute or five pounds in one minute for the uh, CROR. Or the Canadian, the Canadian Rail Operating. So if we want to do that and the way how the shadow is on it, let's charge it a little bit. And there's a lap. And if we wait a minute, start saying now, and we'll wait one minute, and we should not have, it is, the handle is in lap, which means... There is no air movement at all, and there should not be any, no more than five pounds leakage in one minute, which means five ticks on the gauge in one minute. Being that I have here in the shop, there shouldn't be any. So after a minute, and that's about a minute there, and again, we don't have any leakage at all, so it kind of gives you an idea of what you're doing now <clears throat> anyways it's much easier to show you out, out on the car but uh, that just kind of gives you an idea of what's happening let's take it out to the car and we'll uh, we'll have a go at it there <laughs> 